In this video I'm going to do two examples of how when we combine two quantities derived using rates we get standard form lines and then how we use those to answer questions in those problems. Before I get into the standard forms let me remind you about how we derive quantities using rates. There comes up all the time in a lot of different applications. For example, gasoline costs $3.75 per gallon. If we purchase 7.5 gallons we multiply $3.75 per gallon times 7.5 gallons to get $28.125 and this would be rounded to $28.13 of course. Here's another one. We have a rate. Bus averages 35 miles per hour for a four hour trip. We multiply 35 miles per hour times four to get 140 miles. Or the density of elemental copper is 8.96 grams per cubic centimeter, so there's another rate, grams per cubic centimeter. If we have a sample of copper with volume 5.90 cubic centimeters, we can multiply 8.96 grams per cubic centimeter times 5.90 cubic centimeters, and that gives around 59.2 grams of copper. So in all of these, we have a rate, dollars per gallon, miles per hour, grams per cubic centimeter, this is rate, not really time. That's, um, we can think of these all as rate something per something. And we multiply it by a number of gallons or a number of hours or a number of cubic centimeters to determine a final answer, a final quantity. If we add two of these derivations, then we get standard form lines. So let's look at two examples. First example, a jar of coins has a number of quarters and dimes. The money in the jar is worth $6. Write an equation modeling the different combinations of quarters and dimes in the jar and graph this equation. Then use the graph to give three different possible numbers of quarters and dimes in the jar. So let's see how this arrives at a standard form equation. Now, when we're going to write down an equation, we're, we're not going to use x and y. So in applied problems, it's better to use variables that are more descriptive. We'll use q for the number of quarters and d for the number of dimes. So since quarters are worth 25 cents per coin, $0.25, the quarters in the jar are worth 0.25Q. For example, if you had six quarters, you would do six times 25 cents to see how much money you had. Since Q is the number of quarters, we're going to multiply 0.25 times Q to see how much the quarters in the jar are worth. In the same fashion, dimes are worth 10 cents a piece, so we're going to multiply the dimes in the jar, D, by 0 0.10, which is how many we have in dollars. And finally, since the jar has six dollars in coins, if we add together how much the quarters are worth and how much the dimes are worth, we get a standard form equation modeling the amount of coins in the jar. 0.25Q plus 0.15D, that's these two quantities, has to add up to six dollars. Since this is a standard form line, we're going to graph it by getting the intercepts as described in the previous lesson. So to do that, we're going to set q equal to 0 to get d, and d equal to 0 to get q. So first I set q equal to 0. If we put q equal to 0, we get a 0 here for q. This term is then equal to 0, so it drops. We get 0 0.10d equals 6. 6.00 is just 6. And then I just have to multiply both sides by 10 shifting the decimal point over to get 1d equals 60. So of course that means d equals 60 if q is 0. If d is 0, we get this sequence of steps. d becomes 0. This term is 0. We get 0.25q equals 6 again. Here I'm going to multiply by 100 on both sides. That shifts the decimal point over here, so I have 25q and it shifts the invisible decimal point over two spots, creating 600 here. Then I have to divide both sides by 25, and I get when d is 0, q is 24. So our two intercepts are when q is 0, d is 60, and when q is 24, d is 0. Since we're not using x and y, we need to choose which variable to put on which axis. There's no reason to choose one over the other. I wrote q first here, so I'm just going to put q on the x-axis. I'm going to put D on the y-axis. So the horizontal axis is the q-axis, the vertical axis is the d-axis. And my graph here 
It's only in quadrant one where both variables are positive. I don't have any of the other quadrants where the variables are negative because I don't care about negative values for D or Q since that's just a number of coins. So now let's plot our two points. Q equals zero, D equals 60. That's up here. And then Q equals 24, D equals zero is around there. And since I'm confident that those intercepts are correct, the graph of my line looks like this. And then finally, we were asked to give three possible combinations of coins in the jar. We've already got two. Okay, Q zero, D 60, and Q is 24, D is zero. You could argue said, wait, the, it said the jar had quarters in it, so this is not a possibility. I'm gonna accept that as, as possibility. Maybe they're lying and it was only all dimes, or it was only all quarters. But I need one more, because it asked for three. So if I look at this line here, I'm looking for a point that looks like it's on the line that's easy to spot. And one possible point is 1035 right there. That looks like it's on the graph. So that would correspond to 10 quarters and 35 dimes. And in fact, 10 quarters are worth $2.50. 35 dimes are worth $3.50 and that totals $6. So that's a legitimate third combination. My second example, a bronze medallion, bronze is an alloy consisting of copper and tin, has volume 15 cubic centimeters, and I'm gonna write CC for cubic centimeters. Copper has a density of 8.95 grams per cubic centimeter, which I'll write like that. Tin has a density of 7.31 grams per cubic centimeter. And the total mass of the medallion of the copper and tin combined is 131 grams. So we're gonna write two standard form equations using this information, and then we'll go over to Desmos and graph them and try to figure out how much copper and how much tin is in the medallion. So we've got two different ways of measuring the amount of each metal in the medallion. First is the volume. We know the total volume is 15 cubic centimeters. And then we also have the mass. We know the total mass is 131 grams. Each will lead to a standard form equation. But first, we need to decide whether to let our variables represent the volume of each metal or to let the variables represent the mass of each metal. And the way to do that is to ask, wait, which of these mass or volume will be determined from the other? And since we have density, we're gonna figure out the mass by using the volume. Remember, we, to get the mass, we're gonna do like however many cubic centimeters we have of copper, we're gonna do that volume times this density to get the mass. So whenever you have two quantities and one is derived from the other, you wanna let your variables represent the independent underived unknowns. So mass is gonna be derived from volume, so we're gonna let our variables represent volume. So I'm gonna let C represent the volume of copper and T represent the volume of tin. And then we'll compute the mass based on those variables. So there are my variables. C is the volume of copper, T is the volume of tin. These are both in cubic centimeters. I should have put that there. So now I'm gonna get my two equations. The first equation is, since the total volume is 15 cubic centimeters, and since C and T represent the volume, I simply add C and T together to get 15. Volume of copper plus volume of tin is 15, 15 cubic centimeters. So I'll add that to my list over here. C plus T is 15. Now the mass. So remember, the way we get the mass from the volume is we multiply the volume by the density. So we're gonna multiply 8.9, for the copper, we're gonna multiply 8.95 grams per cubic centimeter by the volume of the copper. And we're representing the volume of the copper with C. So the mass of the copper is 8.95, which is its density, times the volume in cubic centimeters. So 8.95 C is the mass of the copper. And in the same way, the mass of the tin is 7.31 times T. There's the density of tin times the volume, which we're representing with the variable T, 
So there's the mass of the tin. And adding these together, we get the total mass of the medallion. We have 8.95 C grams of copper and 7.31 T grams of tin and together we get the total mass 131 grams and so that's our final equation. So now we have our two equations. So now we're going to pop over to Desmos and graph them and see if we can answer this question. Okay so here we are in Desmos and I've copied this information, our equations, as an image into Desmos. So now I want to graph them and see what I can figure out about the amount of copper and the amount of tin in the medallion. Now Desmos doesn't like C and T as variables. It only uses X and Y. So since I've written C first, I'm going to think of that as being X. I'm going to think of T as being Y. So the first equation I'm going to graph in Desmos is just X plus Y is 15. So there's my first equation, and we can hover over the equation and see all the different pairs that work. We can't have negative values for mass or for volume, so I'm not worrying about this stuff down here. So we can see the extremes here. One extreme is this point up here is all tin, and then this point down here is all copper. Remember, copper is like x. This is the copper axis down here. Now let's graph the second equation. This is the mass equation. So what do we have? 8.95x plus 7.31y equals 131. So there's my second equation. This point here is when the entire medallion consists of tin and this would be, it would have to be 17.921 cubic centimeters of tin. Remember, the variables are still volume. So we're still looking at volumes on this line. This equation is derived using mass, but C represents a volume. T represents a volume. So these ordered pairs are still volumes. It's just, this is the possible combinations of volumes you could have because the masses have to add up to 131 grams. So this is what we're constrained to because we know the total volume and this is what we're constrained to because we know the total mass. And if we come down here and see where these two lines intersect, what is that point there? 13.018 comma 1.982 that is the one point that satisfies both equations and so it meets both of our constraints, both the mass constraint on the blue line and the volume constraint on the red line. So this tells us the volume of copper and tin in the medallion. Apparently it has around 13.0 cubic centimeters of copper and around 1.9 cubic centimeters, or around 2.0 if you round correctly, around 2.0 cubic centimeters of tin. And if we wanted to know the mass of the, of the copper and the mass of the tin in the medallion, I would take those two values and multiply them by their densities. I would take 13.018, multiply that by 8.95, that would tell me the mass of copper, and I would take 1.982, multiply it by 7.31, and that would tell me the mass of tin in the medallion. So we've answered our question, how much copper and how much tin is in the medallion? And we can answer using the volume, that's the cubic centimeters of each, or we can multiply by densities and tell the mass of each in the medallion.